Hello, everyone. Uh, we're live. Welcome to uh, STO Weekly. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, today, I'll be talking to Takeshi Oneda about Istio's new WASM-based extension mechanism and ecosystem. Takeshi is a software engineer at Tetrade, and he's also Envoy Proxy and Proxy WASM maintainer. Uh, at the end, we'll have dedicated time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll do our best to get them answered. So STO 1.12, was released uh, last Thursday. So that release includes a new powerful extension mechanism for adding custom and third-party WASM modules to your Istio service mesh. The new WASM plugin API allows you to uh, configure WebAssembly plugins and using that same resource that's called WASM uh, plugin, you can easily deploy custom plugins to either specific workloads or to the whole mesh. One thing to note here, this functionality is still an alpha. So if you have, if you decide to play with it and if you have any feedback, uh, istio.io and uh, provide some feedback there uh, for the functionality. There are also other things uh, uh, that were improved. Um, one was in the telemetry API. So back in 1.11, the telemetry API uh, and telemetry custom resource definition were added. Now in this version, the support for configuring metrics and access logging was expanded. So this means now that you can use the telemetry resource to um, enable or disable access logging and configure metrics, for example. There's also some improvements that were made to uh, Helm installation. There's also support for Kubernetes Gateway API and a bunch of other fixes and features. So you can get the full announcement on istio.io and we'll include the link in the video description. One more quick announcement before we go to the main topic. We've opened registration for Istio Wasm Extensions Workshop. So this is a free and live workshop on Wasm in Istio and Envoy. In this workshop, you'll learn how to create your own Wasm, plugin, Wasm plugins, how to use them to expand the capabilities of your service mesh. We'll also talk about how Istio manages Wasm, Wasm plugins, how you can deploy them. We'll talk about best practices for writing plugins. And of course, there'll be plenty of hands-on labs uh, for you to try things out and talk to uh, experts. Speaking of experts, uh, I have Takeshi Oneda joining me today. Um, Takeshi, together with Lejean and others, was instrumental in making the new WASM-based extension mechanism feature work in the latest Istio version. So I'll hand it off to Takeshi to share his screen and he can start with his presentation and tells, tell you all about these uh, awesome features that he was uh, working on. So I'll stop okay, sharing sure. and okay. let, let you do your thing. Right. Can you see my screen? Uh, yep. Okay, cool. I that think you can, if you can just make it, uh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, cool. Hello everyone. And I'm super excited to be here because, uh, we finally reached this milestone, right? It's the 1.12 will come with, is coming with wasm based extension as a first class, uh, mechanism in Nestio. So this is one of the most anticipated feature in Nestio. And that is, uh, today's topic and, um, let me change my thing. Okay, cool. I'll go with one. Okay, um, let me um, talk a bit about myself before we dive deeper into the main topic. I'm, uh, I'm Takeshi, I'm uh, working at Tetrade and maintainer of Envoy. And notably, I'm the maintainer of WebAssembly related code base. And also I'm the maintainer of Proxy Wasm project where I've been creating uh, multiple language SDKs, including Go and Zig, and also I'm contributor to the Tiningo, Ziglang, of course, Istio, and Chromium V8, and etc. And um, I'm super excited to be here because this is one of the um, 
I've been spending 50%, more than 50% of my time on this project. So yeah, let's get started. And uh, before we uh, dive deeper into Istio and the Anvil WebAssembly plugin system, I think we should talk about WebAssembly in general and why is it important to Anvil and Istio? Why is it gaining much attention in this uh, cloud native field? So um, WebAssembly is, uh, for those who don't know, uh, WebAssembly is a safe, portable, low-level binary instruction format. And um, if you look at the website, you would see several features that describes WebAssembly. And uh, I've listed some of them. And the first one is uh, WebAssembly is said to be fast, but it has some implication here, but so you cannot generalize this statement without having any assumption. But in general, WebAssembly's instruction format is very well designed and it's very simple and it's easy for compiler developers to produce very fast uh, instruction format or binary, right? And that is uh, enabled by WebAssembly has very simple common hardware uh, oriented um, instructions in its binary. So that's why we say um, WebAssembly is very fast, but please note that it depends on the implementation of runtimes. So for example, if you're writing WebAssembly interpreter, of course it's not, it's not fast, but if you're writing very performant uh, just-in-time compiler, it's fast. So that's the meaning of why we are saying WebAssembly is fast. And uh, the next one is, um, you know, uh, WebAssembly is very secure and uh, very uh, safe. And there is a number of reasons why we are saying WebAssembly is secure. And one is that, uh, as you see here, um, WebAssembly's uh, compiled code is immutable at runtime. So meaning that you cannot observe the memory space where your program is placed at runtime. So this is achieved by uh, WebAssembly specification that um, your program will never be placed in the memory space you can access. So that's the reason, that's the one of the reasons why we say WebAssembly is secure and safe. And also, the next one is very important to Amber Proxy and ACO. And the WebAssembly is said to be polyglot, meaning that you can, because of the simple format of uh, instructions and the binary, you can compile virtually any languages to web, web, WebAssembly. So here we have Go languages and Rust and C++ and Zig. All of them can be compiled down to WebAssembly because of the its simpleness in the instruction format, right? So this is especially useful when you embed WebAssembly in your program and provide, for example, plugin system you know, like Amber Proxy. Then that means you provide users with the opportunities to write their own favorite languages for plugins. That's why we say WebAssembly is polyglot, right? And the next one or last one is WebAssembly is said to be embeddable, right? And embeddable meaning that uh, you can embed WASM virtual machines into your program. And for example, in this diagram, you see that uh, Amboy proxy and Ethereum and Crossred and anything like that, you can embed WebAssembly modules or WebAssembly virtual machines into your program and run it inside your processes in order to provide, for example, plugin system or in order to execute third-party unreliable binaries or thing, something like that. So this is achieved by um, the fact that WebAssembly's specification is decoupled from uh, any OS layer or any platform specific features. So for example, in WebAssembly specification, you don't see any file system or networking or processes or anything like that. So that's the reason why we can use or embed WASM virtual machines into your program and provide your own platforms on top of WASM virtual machines. So that's the... Um, that's so. That's the um, very notable features of 
web assemblies that are very relevant to AMBA proxy and ACO. And now we are dive deeper into uh, web assembly with AMBA proxy, right? And we've already done a great show by Peter on Istio Weekly episode seven about developing AMBA Evasum extensions. So if you hadn't checked it out, uh, I highly recommend it. So, um, but let me briefly um, recap why Envoy is using Wasm and how it works and anything like that. Um, and basically, Envoy proxy is embedding uh, WebAssembly V8 or WebAssembly virtual machines into each thread, right? And you, you can run Wasm modules or Wasm programs into each thread. And then Envoy proxy will use the your program or virtual machines to extend its functionality. And uh, the interfaces between virtual, wasn't virtual machines and AMBA proxy is described by proxy wasm AVI. And the proxy wasm AVI is specifying the how to handle proxy events inside wasm virtual, virtual machines or and what kind of API is provided by Envoy into Wasm virtual machine or something like that. So that's the very high level overview of how um, Envoy is using WebAssembly to extend its functionality, right? But uh, if, you, if you look at the proxy Wasm API, it's fairly uh, low level. It's very low level for no experts. So for example, if you look at this link, this is the this is the place where we place the um, specification on the communication of, between Amba proxy and Wasm virtual machine. But if you look at the inside, uh, very um, C level uh, specification is there, right? So for example, here we have functions implemented in the Wasm module, right? Meaning that uh, you have to define these functions inside your WASM program. So without having any issues, without having any differences with this specification. So meaning that uh, it's very, I don't think everyone can do uh, programming so that they comply with this proxy was maybe a specification. So that's why we are providing five language SDKs for non-experts. Non-experts meaning that you don't need to learn every detail of proxy WASM ABI. And, and instead you can rely on programming language specific APIs in order to uh, comply with this proxy wasm ABI. So for example, we are, we are providing proxy wasm go SDK right here. And if you look at inside, we are providing some go API instead of proxy wasm ABI. So here we have, for example, Okay, cool. Here we have this function named replace downstream data, meaning that we are by invoking this function, the downstream data or the TCP packet from the downstream will be replaced by given by the array, right? So it's very simple to use. So that's why I think these SDKs are the places where non-experts can get started very easily. So um, let me do some simple demonstration of Wasm in Envoy. It's not still yet, but a simple example. So let me share my VS code, right? Okay, now here we have Go source code on the left, left side and you would see we are using proxy wasm go SDK here and uh, several functions. And uh, for example, here we have the function named on HTTP request headers, meaning that um, it's very obvious that this function will be called in response to the HTTP header, HTTP request headers arrival event, right? And inside of it, we are calling this API, and if you look at the documentation of this API, this is a function is used for retrieving HTTP request headers, right? 
So meaning that we are retrieving HTTP request headers inside of this function, which is called when we receive HTTP request headers from downstream. So, and the, these, the next lines we have, um, we are logging the headers uh, by using format function, right? And uh, please note that this function is invoked inside Wasm virtual machines, meaning that this print function is um, instructing Envoy to log this string into Envoy's log stream. So let's verify that behavior. Um, first of all, we have to build this what go source code, right? You know, into uh, Wasm modules. So we are using here to, we are using Tinygo here. So it's very simple to use. Now we have Wasm modules, right? So it's uh, very simple, it's very fast. And if you look at the inside of Wasm module, you would see some, um, these functions called, so for example, proxy on request headers. These functions are specified in proxy wasm ABI, right? So meaning that without knowing the proxy wasm ABI specification, um, you can easily produce proxy wasm ABI compatible wasm binary just by using this, our wasm go SDK. So, so that's why we recommend using the SDK to get started. So now the, the next thing is uh, we are going to deploy this Wasm module into Ambot proxy, right? On the right side, we have um, Envoy ammo, Envoy ammo, and inside of it, we are defining, oops, we are defining HTTP Wasm filter, and inside of it, we are pointing to the local file, uh, local Wasm file, which we just compiled. So meaning that we are loading this Wasm file into this Envoy HTTP filter. So let's verify the behavior. And first of all, let's deploy Envoy. Okay, cool. So what we should expect is that um, this function on HTTP request headers functions is actually called by Envoy proxy. So you, you should see if so, for example, if you make this kind of request with the custom headers, this is my header, right? So what we should expect now is this header will, should be uh, logged into this Envoy's log stream. So let's verify that behavior. Let's see. Okay, cool. So we see the uh, original header we just used into inside of the was um, Envoy's log stream. So meaning that this function we just compiled is actually used by Envoy proxy. So if you look down and uh, we also uh, defining on HTTP response headers function, right? And inside of it, we are um, adding some additional headers into response headers. And uh, these additional headers are defined the inside of this function. function. So actually we see inside of response headers, we see um, this additional header, right? So that, that's very simple, but a very powerful way to extend our proxy. So let's see, uh, that's all. So let me go back to the slide. Okay, cool. So what we have done so far is uh, how to deploy Wasm modules and how to build Wasm module and deploy, how to deploy to uh, Ambo proxy locally, right? And so, but we are here to learn Istio plugins, uh, Istio API. And uh, so how can we deploy Wasm modules, for example, into your production Istio cluster, or maybe, yeah, maybe data center or et cetera. So how can we do that? So that's the topic and that's how our new uh, Wasm plugin API helps. But before we dive deeper into the main topic, let me talk a bit about the history of Istio Wasm plugins, right? 
So first of all, uh, before 1.4, there was no mechanism. No one can do that. And uh, this was actually before I started contributing to Istio. So I have no idea what kind of conversation was there. But one thing I can, I'm pretty confident is there was some strong motivation for Istio developers or Istio maintainers to have flexible, powerful plugin system like WebAssembly because that's going to reduce the um, maintenance burden of their own very complicated uh, Istio specific Envoy extension. Because that's why they, are, they were maintaining Istio fork of Envoy proxy. So, right. So, if we have some flexible, powerful plugin system, we don't need to maintain Envoy proxy by, their, by ourselves, right? So, there was a strong motivation. So, that's why um, in 1.5, that was um, 1.5 years ago. I think um, Envoy runtime, Envoy wasn't runtime has been released with it's still 1.5, right? But uh, even though it's announced and it's theoretically speaking, it's possible to run one uh, Wasm extensions in Istio since 1.5, but uh, there was still the gap for non-experts. One of the reasons is that you have to use Envoy filter resources. So meaning that you have to know every detail of Envoy API and the Istio details and anything like that. So it's not, it's not that simple. And also, you, even though you can specify HTTP locations for WASM binaries, but there was a bug in Envoy that um, Envoy couldn't recover from fetch failures. So it's not, it's not, it's not for production usage. So that's why, um, that's, um, that's why we've uh, improved Istio agent in 1.9 that was a uh, half year ago. I think um, since 1.9, Envoy filter resources has been has started being intercepted um, Istio agent. So, and the Istio agent is trying to fetch was in binary from HTTP resources instead of Envoy and load the fetch binary into Envoy proxy as a local file. So that's how Istio agent has resolved the fetch failure issues that has existed uh, since 1.5, but, but you still have to use Envoy filters, right? So it's not for everyone still, right? And also you have to host Wasm binary by yourself. So um, it's, um, it's, not, it's not easy to use, right? So that's why we've announced uh, Istio plugin, uh, first class Wasm plugin API in 1.12, which is the latest release. And then now, thanks to this first class plugin, you don't need to use dirty Envoy filter. So on the on this slide, you see some example YAML for Wasm plugin API. And inside of it, for example, we are using selector API. And inside of it, we are specifying the labels that you that um, to specify the Kubernetes pods that where you want to deploy Wasm plugins. And also we have started supporting for um, OCI images in URL fields. So meaning that you can host any, um, any WASM binary in any OCI registries, meaning that you don't need to host uh, WASM binary on HTTP locations for remote fetch. So that's very simple to use. So how does this work is, it's very simple. It's almost same as 1.9. The only difference is that Istio agent is trying to fetch Wasm binary from any OCR registries. So that's how it works. So um, it's very simple. And now um, let me explain how to deploy Wasm plugins in Istio 1.12. So how does the workflow look like? So first step is very simple. Uh, as I did, write Wasm extensions with your favorite languages. 
And the next one is build wasm binary as I did with tiny go. And the third one is um, build OCI image, which Istio agent can consume, right? And push the images to any OCI registry and apply the custom resource. So, but uh, as you noticed, um, step three is still not clear to everyone. So newcomers, right? So that's, um, I have to explain a bit more about how to build OCI images that can be consumed by Istio agent. So um, in order to achieve this, uh, we've worked on uh, OCI image format and that can be uh, used by Istio agent. Right, so we worked on this very hard, and now we have some specification here. And if you look at inside, um, so let's say some specification on the image layers and the annotations, etc. Um, but um, just like proxy was maybe I, it, you don't need to go through this specification and. And instead, you can rely on very simple step to produce uh, compatible OCI images, right? So here's uh, how to deploy, how to develop, how to build OCI image uh, spec compatible images. So prepare Docker CLI. It's very simple to use, right? Everyone get used to it. And uh, also the prepare wasn't binary you want to deploy, right? And then have the unique Docker file, which is the same for all WASM images. So meaning that you don't need to modify Docker file so that it, it do complies with Istio specification and anything like that. You don't need to struggle to do that. So instead we have provide, we have a unique Docker file that can be used for every WASM images. And then build, build the images and that's it. So it's very simple. So let me demonstrate how the workflow will look like. Let me share VS Code again. Okay, cool. So, um, so now we have Kubernetes cluster where, oh, let's see. Okay, cool. Now we have Kubernetes cluster where I deploy Istio, right? Well, of course it's um, 1.12. And also I have deployed a uh, demo application where Istio sidecars are already injected. So what do we wanna do is the wasn't plugin we just demonstrated into this application container. So first of all, we've already built the wasm binary. And what we wanna do is um, package this wasm module into Docker container and push it against, so let's say GitHub container registry and deploy the container into this, um, this uh, Kubernetes cluster, right? So first of all, we have, we have some Docker file here. So as I said, this Docker file can be used for every WASM images, right? It's very simple. Um, one thing is just um, we are copying WASM modules into with this in, inside of the container with this specified name, right? And uh, some, you, have, you don't have to modify this Docker file. So just use it. So one, what we are doing is just build the Docker image with this Docker file. So I am using GitHub container registry with Tetrate labs and blah, blah, blah. And I tag this container with V1, right? So let's build it. So now we have copied WASM module inside of this Docker container. So the next is the push the container against container registry, right? It should succeed. Okay, cool. So because um, this Docker file is fairly standard, so there's no wasm specific um, 
concepts or modification or customization and anything like that. So you can push this container to any registry. For example, I'm using GitHub container registry here. So now the, our WASM module is packaged inside of this container and the container is already pushed against GitHub container registry. So the final step we have we can do is uh, we deploy the container into the um, this application container. But before we deploy before we deploy the wasn't plugin, let's um, check how to check um, the application is actually working. Okay, cool. So it's working. So now we are deploying wasn't plugins from OCR registry. So now on the right side, you are seeing YAML file where I specify labels as HTTP bin, meaning that I am going to deploy this wasn't plugin against this application container. And and below of the selector, we see a URL field where I specify GitHub container registry and blah, 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 and the V1. Then this is location is exactly where I push the image against, right? So what we should expect now is to, after deploying this plugin YAML, we see plugin resource is created with this container location. So what we should expect now is our wasn't plugin, we just packaged it into Docker container, should be deployed into that application container. So in order to verify that, I am making HTTP request. Cool. So we are seeing the inside of the response header, we are seeing the additional header. And this header, of course, is injected by our version plugin. So it's very simple and it's easy to use, right? So let's make change to this version plugin. So let's say, for example, who am I? Peter. Cool. And it's still weekly, uh, episode 14. Right, so so let's reveal our wasn't plugin, right? And uh, let's build the container again. So, and, but this time we should tag this container with other another tag, right? So let's say v two, okay, cool, and push it v two container. Okay, cool. And now we are modifying wasn't plugin API so that wasn't plugin API is using our new container. So let's modify this to V2 container. And what we should do now is deploy wasn't plugin. Cool. So now we should expect is wasn't plugin is redeployed and this new these new additional headers should be added into your response headers, right? So let's find, let's verify that. Okay, cool. Now we see from my Peter, and it's still we pre shop fourteen. So what we have done is modifying wasm module and package package into the Docker file and Docker container again and push it and modify the custom resource. And uh, then, then wasm, new Muslim modules are pulled into was East Envoy containers and deployed. So it's very simple to use. So to wrap up, um, the, uh, in order to undeploy or delete wasm modules, uh, the only thing you can you have to do is just delete this wasn't plugging resource because all the wasn't modules are managed by this custom resources. So, and Istio, Istio D is watching these custom resources and uh, 
if it's uh, if it's gone, then Wasm plugin will be um, will be undeployed. So let's delete this custom resources. Now you we don't have uh, Wasm plugin resource, and what we should expect is to no additional headers are added into the response. Okay, cool. No headers are added. So uh, that's the that's how uh, how to deploy Wasm plugins into Istio cluster and how to undeploy uh, how to clean up uh, Wasm plugins. So it's very simple. So let's get back to the slide. Okay, cool. So um, uh, that's all about Istio plugin. Istio Wasm plugin. Um, APIs. So besides it, uh, we've worked really hard on Envoy Wasm runtime improvements since 1.5. There are a number of improvements. And uh, so for example, now you are able to uh, a lot of more system calls, so meaning that you can use a lot of more uh, standard packages in Go. So for example, you can now use crypt run packages in Go and also uh, so let's say um, you can make some file system related calls and anything like that. And uh, also we've improved some debugability and now you can see backtrace of your Wasm program inside of your Envoy stream. And also we have uh, implemented S3 features. So meaning that you can observe every single one of system calls made by your Wasm program in, into Amber proxy. So this is um, especially useful when you want, when you want to um, audit your program at runtime, or maybe you want to make sure that and no malicious calls are injected into your binary or anything like that. So yeah, that's it. That's about a stress feature. And also now you can choose arbitrary Prometheus namespace for in Wasm defined metrics. So meaning that you, so of course you can, um, it's been possible to define in Wasm metrics, but uh, before 1.12, all the metrics had been prefixed by Envoy. So meaning that you, you couldn't choose your own Prometheus namespace. But in 1.12, now you are free to choose your Prometheus metrics. Metrics, Yeah, that's about the Prometheus. And also a bunch of bug fixes. And these are, these are the things I have been really uh, extremely worked on. Uh, yep. And what's next? Uh, of course, uh, we've announced Alpha release of Wasm plugin API. Uh, there are a number of factors in the project that must be uh, completed. And the one is that image pool secrets in Wasm plugin API. So as I said, uh, Istio agent will pull containers from OCR registries. So meaning that uh, Istio agent have to uh, be configured to uh, uh, pull images from any private registries. So, right, so if we provide some image pool secrets uh, uh, kind of supports in Istio agent, then you are free to choose um, images from any private registry or yeah, anything like that. So, and also, uh, as I said, again, Istio agent is the one who are pulling some images from OCR registries. So meaning that, so let's say we have, if you have, thousands of um, Istio proxy, and then you, after you deploying Wasm plugin resources, then thousands of requests are made against OCI registries. So that's gonna occupy or occupy a fair amount of bandwidth of your cluster. So that's not good for uh, production usage. So, so one, if we have, if we, um, if we have uh, some global cache mechanism that shared across all these two agents, that would be great. So that's, uh, I think that's coming next. So that's pretty much it for today's my talk. Okay, cool.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. This was this was really good. Uh, um, yeah, I like I, I worked with uh, I wrote a couple of articles and everything on using Wasm before all this, right? And there, the only yeah. way that you could do it, like Envoy, loading it with Envoy, fine, it was all right, right? Local file, yeah. that's fine, right? It makes it easier. But then yeah. once you're at Istio, right? It's like, oh, now I have. Like if I use local, that would mean I have to bring in Wasm somehow, share it right with the container <laughs> yeah. and everything. It's like works once, but then what if something goes wrong? What if you need to? Oh, it's just a pain. Yeah. And then, as you said, yeah. with remote, right? And I've ran into yeah. this multiple times. Uh, yeah. You would deploy it, and something went wrong, and there's like it's just no way you could recover. And then configuring yeah. everything with Envoy, uh, like Envoy filter resource. It's just this makes everything like it, it feels like we 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 took a next step on the ladder, right? We're at a higher level now, right? It's yeah. abstracting <laughs> things even more. Uh, and it just makes it so much um, so much easier to use. So yeah. I have uh, I don't know. Uh, I can ask a couple of questions. Uh, so one was uh, in the Docker file. There's yes. you have to do it from scratch. And then you have to copy whatever your wasm is to the yep. plugin.wasm. So the only thing that's required is that plugin.wasm name, right? Yeah. I mean, theoretically, you shouldn't change anything, right? But Istio yeah. Agent is looking for that specific name. Yeah, right? yeah. And also, you have to make sure that the, the container contains only one layer, right? So in, in that oh, okay. example, we have uh, only one instruction in Docker file. So in this example, Docker file in the in the Docker file, we only have copy instruction or wasm file. So that's what that's how we make sure that okay. um, that the container has only one single layer. So okay. so that you know okay. any other garbages or anything. Yeah. 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 I, I'm just thinking how uh, does that have any like let's say is are there scenarios where I would want to like have like a configuration like external configuration for my inside a con container? Yeah, yeah. For example, I I think uh yeah I think that a and so now or later someone will ask that right? <laughs> but uh <laughs> but we I was have first. I was first. yeah 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 <laughs> I know. But but you know first of all you can configure what you can give configuration via wasn't plugging API, right? You know that. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that yeah, that was like you, you, you answered my next question. <laughs> <laughs> There's like in the Wasm plugin API, one thing that we saw was, I mean, there was a workload selector which makes sense, right? Which yeah. allows you to yeah, yeah, yeah. basically say apply this plugin to mm -hmm. these workloads, right? Yeah. There's also the URL, and is there anything else? Uh, yes, anything else. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, have... I, inten I intentionally avoid, you know, introducing some complexity in my slides. So, but there's some other fields you can configure. So please check it out the, on the documentation yeah. on the istio.io website. Yeah. 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 I just, yeah. I just open. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. 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 I just open the documentation. Yeah. Yeah. Let yeah, me yeah, yeah. You I can, can configure a lot of things like phases or priority is one of the most important things in the documentation. Yeah, so I think I think I've shared it. Yeah, so selector we've seen URL right, which makes yeah. sense yeah. Uh, to what you want to point. Sha uh, image pool policy, interesting because I mean yeah. not in, interesting in a way because it is it is in the end a an image, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah pull secret. I'm assuming is this secret is here, but it's not implemented. Not, oh, so okay. I think we should remove from this documentation. Okay, okay. <laughs> there, that's a free like a free bug for someone if they want to walk <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah, remove yeah, yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah, free yeah. issue, cool. free contribution yeah, to yeah, SEO. Yeah, yeah. Uh, verification key, plug it. Okay, so it's probably plug in config, yeah, yeah. Big, right? One. I'm assuming. Uh, all fields. Oh, okay. So they just do yeah. like key value pairs or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's awesome. Also, yeah. one like one last question before we go. Um, what's the uh, like? Let's say uh, something goes wrong, right? Uh, yeah. How is how does that error manifest itself? Will my yeah, will the yeah, container yeah. fail? So sidecar fail? A, or that's a very good question. Once your program crashes, then every after coming request will fail. So there's no 
program recovery mechanism inside of Envoy Proxy. So that's how, that's what we needed to solve, but it's right. very complex, right? We, so should we restart VM or just leave it alone or so it's- Oh, um, okay, okay. So it's like it's a very figure... complex issue. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I should, I should figure out, but- yeah, at so the it's all moment almost... it, once your program fails, then all of your after coming requests will fail. So that's yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, that makes sense. But your container will keep on running in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So what? But then if uh, uh, what happens if the uh, image pool fails? Image pool like... fail, then Istio agent will report back to Istio D as the XDS error. So. Never a filter chain, filter chains will never be created. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So if you, yeah. yeah, so if you have like an issue of pulling the image or like, yeah, pulling the image pretty much, image doesn't exist, whatever, then you'll actually see that, right? I yeah. Mean, in yeah. like in the terms of the status of, yep. um, of the pod. All right, awesome. Uh, thank you very much for doing this. Uh, we'll be back in, I think, two weeks from now and then. Uh, uh, everyone who joins will be able to uh, help me set up external Istio control plane because <laughs> that's the next thing that we'll talk about. I think. Cool. Cool. All right, everyone. Thanks. And thanks. see you next time. Thanks, Takeshi. Thanks.